here, it works. And the further you go in, it just opens out again and again and again. Yeah? Which is very interesting again on a metaphysical level. Uh, this is a highlighted, this is, I've gone in on this one. You can see the, I'm sorry, it's not big enough. I know you can't see, I apologize. Okay, so there's the original photograph, there's the symmetry, there's it highlighting the central portion. This is using leaves. Noticeably, the spirits that come from it actually have the character of the objects that are involved. You know, if you have a, you know, there's something about it. I know that sounds a bit crazy, actually. You say, well, yeah, it's a leafy, they're leafy spirits, Roger, because you did it out of leaves. <laughs> you know, well, maybe so. But there is a subtlety there as well, somehow, for me. I've actually made videos of, you take the picture, right, in, and in my software, here you are, you've got an example of the full scale one and a zoomed in one. Yeah? And the pictures are crossing continuously. So each step of the film is a pixel crossing. Yeah? And it's mirrored on top of each other. And every single step presents a whole new totem pole. Lifes and lifes of work I could do. Yeah? Forever. I haven't done it. I, I welcome anyone to try this. You know, just take the idea of symmetry as, as a motive for, for carving. Right, full circle as we say. One of my shows, private shows, is called Full Circle uh, because we come back to my beginning, my source, the material itself and the fact that I sculpted bark surfaces. Uh, I then went into clay, as you know, and then I became a forester, and then I became a sculptor, and here I am full circle. In fact, coming here is full circle, do you know the weirdest thing? Everyone I meet here, and I don't remember everyone's name, but it is coming to me slowly. Yeah, it's almost like I know you all intimately. It's just crazy, really, especially the English people with me. Well, everyone, actually. It's like, we're all the same. We all think the same. We're all there. Yeah. And that's what I go back to my bark surfaces because it is those patterns in life that flutter through on different levels. You know, the ups and downs, the emotions of what we do, the distances we travel. You know, time itself, the extension of our life of where we are in it. You know, I'm 46 now. I don't do speed carving. Yeah, I don't want to do that. What I want to do is long, lengthy, unprofitable. <laughs> Figurative work. But I want to do it for my passion. Yeah? I've got nothing to prove. I just want to live that experience. And coming back to my bark surfaces, this is a recent commission that I've done for a, a borough council, and it's all about all the ideas I've talked about brought together, which is bringing people in to the woods. It's a pierced piece, it's a big bench. Um, but what I've done, it's a, big, it's a big oak log, it's three foot wide, and I stripped all the sapwood off and all the bark, yeah, and then I recreated the bark, I carved it, and I did it with a jackhammer. All right, um, so I actually ripped that wood out, ripped it, for days, nearly took my hands off, but I love it. And I've now worked out how to do it with a saw, and you may say, yeah, we've been doing bark for ages, but I'll tell you what, I love this. I love the idea of it, you know, and it's all, actually, on a technical level, the reason for me why it works so well, if I zoom in, it's all about the edges, yeah? We can all do lots of strokes of the saw and make that bark, but the thing that makes this pop out is the fact that I've gone around all the edges and developed a very uh, exacting boundary so that the bark is actually visually, physically different to the surface that it's on. Yeah, I've actually gone around with a little cold chisel, you know, like a um, for cutting stone, and just hit it all the way around the edge, so it just lifts it off. Yeah, and that tiny, you know, um, I don't know, sixty-fourth of an inch or whatever that's left, it actually works visually. You see it, whether you like it or not. You might not perceive it, but you see that it's separate. Anyway, that was on the technical level. So is that bottom part the real bark or is that... No, that's my bark? carved bark. Awesome. Wow, that's 
very good. <laughs> you can see the detail in that. I, you can I see know. the edges that I'm talking about. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and it, again, like I said, full, it's, it brings everything together. The simplified forms, the placidity, the turning wood, which is hard, into a plastic medium with these sweeping curves, the minimalism, the bark surfaces, the spirituality, the, the metaphysics of drawing the observer, drawing the public into the wood. You know, as an education to link them to their landscape, to the, to the earth they come from. You know, and to the sustainability of the world around us. Yeah, as you know, with all my coppice work. You know. So, it has, and then this is the second one that I did. It's much smaller, full circle. Mary, whose husband died, and asked me to make a sculpture for her husband in the vein of Barbara Hepworth. Ten years later, she's now 92. She's moving home. And her, her children said, please, Roger, come back and leave something behind. So I made this. And uh, it's really good to be back there because it's been a hell of a journey, 10 years of my life from that one commission. And uh, I used the bark surface again. Mm -hmm. And this is placed right next to John's memorial. And the pictures I put of this on Facebook caught Randy Bonney's attention and he said Rog coming to Ridgeway this year I didn't even know who he was <laughs> <laughs> I said all I did know is he was always extremely poignant about his comments of my work always yeah and I said yeah Randy I'd love to I'm planning maybe soon next year maybe sometime when I've worked, when I've reinvented myself again into something else. He said, no, it's this year, Rog. I went, okay. <laughs> I'm not a rich man, I phoned my mum. Within the first four words, she said, you're going. <laughs> and that's why I'm here, full circle. Yeah? And I'm about to, like the invertebrates that I love that live in our woods, I'm about to reinvent myself. The cocoon is about to open, yeah, and I will metamorphose those into a new flying creature. Because from now on, that experience of 10 years of making uh, abstract work, I'm going to take that and all the influences that I have and turn it into spiritual figurative pieces that take my message to the whole world. So I'm a bit disappointed that I can't show you how to drill a hole with a chainsaw because I spent a lot of time filming it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <Thank> you. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, it's done it secretly, so I don't reveal my secret, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to share my big secret. Believe me. Well, I could find it. If, if give me a couple of seconds, actually. I need